What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome back to episode 44 of our Social Montbelli Let's Play here in Football Manager 2018 and today we make our Champions League debut. I'm really excited for today's game. We're going to be taking on Chelsea and well I feel like the best place to start is with the Champions League group stage draw. Now going into this we were, knew we were probably going to be fourth seed. We were a fourth seed. Our draw could have been a little better. It could have been a little worse, to be fair. You can see in our group we are going to be joined by Zenit, who, uh, of course, a powerhouse of Russian football. But alongside them, two much bigger sides, I guess, in the context of European football historically. Uh, Chelsea and Roma also in this group. Chelsea, you can see over the last few years, had a little bit of a decline as of late. Last season they finished third in the Premier League, but still a very good side. And the other team in our group, Roma, a bit of a yo-yo club in terms of they've been in and out of Europe quite repeatedly on this save, uh, especially within uh, the Champions League. You can see last year, though, they did finish second in Serie A. So they're a club that I don't feel like we can afford to underestimate. You know, they have finished ahead of Milan last year. And, uh, well, they're not going to be easy to beat. So, yeah, today we kick off things against Roma, which is going to be big for us. Since you were last here, however, just to quickly go through these, five games, five wins. We have started the form this season really hot. Now, granted, these were some easier games. The first team we took on was Riem. And, uh, well, as you can see here, we won 3-1 in this game. Uh, Francis Francisco Trincao got the early goal for us. However, we were pegged back. And, uh, well, a bit of a, a second-half fight back was required. In this game, though... Good little performance, and this was our first game, of course, with our new tactical system. I elected, rather than go with the free striker system, to stick with the kind of uh, slightly adjusted 4-2-3-1 that involved the complete forward playing alongside an advanced forward. Um, that system has continued to see tweaks over these games. You'll notice in the first few games especially, we struggled a little bit initially and got back into the games, and this was an example of that. In our next game, we took on Amiens, and uh, well, we won this one 3-1 as well. Um, this was actually a little bit more convincing. All the goals coming in the second half. This game, you know, the first half, we tried to get things going. It wasn't quite working. We tinkered with the tactic a little, a few player roles and positions changed, and uh, well, we saw immediate, well, effects. You can see here, Dukas, with two goals, has had a very good season so far, Dukas, and uh, well, actually, Rennie Adelaide as well has been superb for us. You can see in this game, uh, he did get a goal in the 70th minute, and uh, well, he's really been one of the standout players. Of course, a player we brought in this year from Arsenal for £7.5 million, a big fee paid, really paying the premium for a good French youngster, and I wasn't sure how much he was going to play for us. But to be honest, over the course of these first few games of the season, he has ousted Trincao's kind of left wing spot, which he has held for the last three seasons. And well, it started with this game against Amiens, where he got a goal. In our next game, we took on Toulouse. This game, again, you know, we, we went down early on. You can see it was Gelson Dalla with the goal for Toulouse, who had started the season very well. I believe they were unbeaten going into this. Of course, in goal for them, they had Leroy, our former goalkeeper, on loan again at Toulouse this season from Liverpool. Liverpool. However, he had no chance as Rune Blond smashed one in in the 32nd minute and following on from that, De Cass got another, assisted by Fuchs, who was playing that right wing back role, which we will talk about when we go on to our tactics, because it is a pretty important role for us in our system. And yeah, Fuchs did get man of the match in this game in what was a good little away win, a good little fight back away from home. Anyway, our two most recent games are against Lille and Non. As you can see, we won both of these 4-0. The first game against Lille, very convincing performance. It was Rainy Adelaide with a hat-trick in this game. The last one did come from the penalty spot, but make no mistake, this was his day. And again, really, really impressive performance, this one. Uh, the team as a whole hasn't changed too much. Uh, Diara and Felix have held on to their centre-back positions. We have secured Reese Oxford on loan for the season. I talked last episode about the fact that was still in flux. But the two centre-backs, Diara and... Uh, well, Udakai, Felix, they've been incredible to be honest there's no there's no other word to describe just how well they've meshed into this team they've been superb good clean sheet to get here you know we'd had a few games where we conceded one goal uh, and well it was good to get a clean sheet in this game against Lille and uh, well Almada also got a goal in this game but it was also good to get a clean sheet and our next game against Nantes again another 4-0 win away from home very impressive performance an away goal helped us on our way but from there we really took this game by the scruff of the neck Nantes actually had a fair share of the ball 
In a lot of these games, we have dominated possession, and while not, they didn't allow us to have quite so much of the ball. However, we were clinical when we did have it. We limited their opportunities. They didn't have a shot on target all game. Felix Udakai did get man of the match in this game, and uh, yeah, Decas was superb. Two goals for him, one assist as well. Uh, Rainy Adelaide with a goal, and also Andre Almeida, of course, the young Portuguese centre mid. A player was a useful backup for us this year. Uh, sorry, last year. This game, he actually came on off the bench early on for an injury to Cleedson. And uh, yeah, a good little result against Nantes. We did rotate the team just a little bit going into that game uh, with this Champions League game on the horizon. So yeah, so far, so good in the league. You can see we are top, although we have had some easier games to start the season. But you've got to beat the teams put in front of you. I guess the likes of Amiens, who last season did end up finishing ninth, and also Toulouse. A not bad performance as Toulouse, you know, finish 8th, Amion 9th. Uh, you know, we really want to be beating those mid-table teams, and so far we're doing that. You can see, looking at the league overview, Rainy Adelaide, highest average rating and most goals. Kubik as well, hasn't been chipping in with a load of goals, but three assists to his name so far this season. He's been pretty good for us to check forward, and uh, yeah, he's rotated a little bit with Mele due to, you know, little knock injuries, but he's been good for us. And also, Almadi, you can see here on an 8.07, can't underestimate just how good he's been to start this season. He's doing very well. You can see here, actually, Fabian Petit, uh, 21 years old, on loan from PSG. He's doing well, very well on loan at uh, Lyon right now, so that's kind of interesting to see. But anyway, that's how we've started the season in terms of the league. As I said, tactics have changed and evolved. This might seem familiar, it might not. It's a little bit odd. This is what we've been running lately. Um, it might look a bit like a monstrosity. It kind of is a monstrosity, but it's uh, an evolution, of course, of the previous asymmetric system that we had. I hope it kind of makes sense when you start looking at the player roles, but essentially, you've got Fuchs as a wing-back who does have to cover a little bit more ground because he is the lone player out on the right-hand side, so he starts slightly higher up the pitch. As a result, Diara does have to cover him behind, but Fuchs is pretty good at getting forward and back in this position. The two centre mids, the roles are still the same. The defence is largely the same in terms of player roles. Um, we still have the left winger and the advanced playmaker from the the old system but you can see they have both been shifted over to the left hand side with then Kubik playing as a complete forward on the right and this is just kind of how we've shaped up it's worked really nicely for us Amada on the support duty rather than the attack duty that the advanced playmaker used to be on just sees him drop a little bit deeper into the center to be a bit more actively involved in play as you saw by his average ratings he's been doing a good job there and uh, Rainy Adelaide when he has been playing has actually been playing this winger role for us and finding a lot of space with this role uh, and uh, well finding the back of the net with it as well so I feel like this is actually what we are going to try and play against Chelsea today we are at home I want to try and play positive football it's not necessarily going to be easy but I feel like this is this system could work for us you know it's not that far off what we had before really but um so far it's shown some good results and um a good kind of sign of when the tactics working fairly well is that your reserve team are doing well and you can see here looking at our reserves they are currently first in the French um Reserve Group 1, which is good to see, and they, of course, adopt our system. Now, granted, uh, there is a big disparity between our reserve team and a lot of the other reserve teams in our league in terms of quality. You can see here we've won the, the kind of under-23 league three of the last four years. But so far this season, 7 wins, 35 goals. You can see some of the results here. 4-1 against Strasbourg, 4-2 uh, against Gijon. Um, obviously a lot of smaller teams in here as well that we kind of pummeled into the ground. You can see the performances have been really impressive by some of our best young prospects. But this has been using the same tactic that we're using in the first team. So it's good to see it working on multiple fronts and certainly finding uh, the back of the net fairly frequently. So, um, yeah, it's going pretty well. There were a few little transfer dealings that I should talk about before we get into today's game. You can see on the ins, I mentioned the Reese oxford signing, a useful little signing. I also brought in Tom Davies as a loan option from Everton just for one year. Um, the reason for bringing this guy in is that we're only paying his wages. It's £10,000 a week, which isn't too bad, really. I didn't really have a great backup option to Chevalier. Now, the player who I brought in to be our backup option, or at least was thinking would be our backup option if we just look at him, was, of course, Maxime Lopez. And, uh, well, he's a go okay player in terms of he could play that centre mid role, but because of the fact we're playing less of a playmaker at the back now in this centre defensive mid role and more of a defensive midfielder, he's just not that great at that role. Um, so as a result, what I decided to do was I got a loan offer for Maxime Lopez from Las Palmas uh, for, you can see here, £230,000 per month. So it's going to be about £2 million that we get off that loan over the course of the year for a player to be brought in on a free transfer. It kind of made sense to do that. And, uh, well, with some of that money that kind of freed up, I went and got Tom Davies on loan for a peanut fee, you know, in comparison to the loan of Maxime Lopez. And I think uh, Tom Davies, he's going to just be a, a good little backup 
cheap option for us in the centre defensive mid role. A good player, fairly professional, so we might be able to use him for some tutoring as well. And uh, yeah, a relatively risk-free transfer. You can see here, Malongo also confirmed his transfer to the club. I believe this deal was already ongoing Um kind of at the start of the season last episode but that is now official and he has gone on loan to Strasbourg in Ligue 2 uh, where he is hopefully going to find some regular first team football you can see in terms of other dealings just a few transfers worth going over I think Leonardo Pereira we sold to Trois uh, we sold him for £750,000 we brought him in for well 10% of that fee he's not played a lot for us his potential at least in the eyes of my assistant wasn't that great I was kind of happy to move him on other players we've loaned out Nessa Carl has gone out on loan uh we can see here Lucas has gone out on loan the young Czech international now, we can actually say. He got his first ever international appearance. Playing for Amiens, going to be playing centre-back for them. Hopefully he can hit the ground running and play regular first-team football in the league. I uh, already talked about the Mulango loan and the last transfer really worth talking about is Pendant going to Genk uh, for, you can see here, £2.6 million, which could rise as high as £3.6 million if I'm not mistaken. I think that's okay money. It's a little bit of a bittersweet moment because I feel quite emotionally attached to Pendant in a way. I feel like he has has been a very important player for us over the last few years. A player who, of course, was in the reserve team when we joined. I didn't think he was going to have a massive impact on the first team, but he really did. And, um, yeah, you can see over the last few years, he really hasn't quite put in good enough performances at left-back. Last year, 13 appearances we gave him. 6.82 average rating, not good enough. With Ben Chilwell occupying that left-back role and doing quite well in the role this season and doing better than Pendant did last season, it kind of just made sense to cash in on him while we could. So a little bit sad there. Uh, of course, originally he was one of our big kind of homegrown players that I did hold in quite high regard. But you can see looking at our first team now, there's quite a few players that are homegrown. Fuchs and Chevalier and uh, Ducasse in our starting eleven are all considered homegrown at club on the bench. You've got players like Hubert, uh, Almeida, Trincao, all considered homegrown at club. And there's a few more players who are going to be due in the not-so-distant future. So, yeah, the future, generally speaking, is looking really, really bright for us. Obviously, we already talked about some of the big performers like Rennie Adelaide. Other players who have performed well, Almada, obviously we saw his form in the league. I mentioned the two centre-backs, Udakai and Diara. Kubik's done well. One goal to his name. Hopefully, he can start finding the back of the net. But his assists have proven crucial. And playing this kind of complete forward role out on the right... I guess his goal-scoring threat is going to be a little bit less than the likes of Dukas, who is playing as kind of the spearhead in our attack. You know, to Kubik is expected to just drop in a little bit more. And to be honest, he's been doing a pretty good job of that so far. But anyway, let's get into today's game against Chelsea. It's going to be a big one for us. It's not been that long since the game against Nantes. In terms of the team, we are going to go with Lafont in goal. As I mentioned last episode, I do want to see Lafont and Sunday West rotate a little bit. To be honest, Lafont's been the better player, so it makes sense to pick him for today's game. At left back, we're going to go with Chilwell. The back two, it's going to be Udakai and Diara. Of course, Felix here has uh, improved a lot this season, you'd have to say. And he looks like a fantastic little centre back for us. You know, a few question marks over his name, but a 7.48 average rating in the league so far this season you can't argue with that alongside him of course Diara a player who we actually had an offer from Sevilla for on deadline day it was a 10 million pound bid I decided to reject it I feel like this guy's just such an important part of our team and how he play his leadership qualities are really important um as of late, we've had a few players coming to us asking for new contracts, and every single time I've asked Diara to talk to the player who wants a new contract, they've dropped their concern, so he does have massive influence in the dressing room. At right wing back, we're going to go with Fuchs, you know, he's kind of found a role for himself in this team now, a player who, for the number of seasons, has kind of just been played wherever we had a bit of a gap in our team. Last season, didn't find himself featuring so much because of the fact uh, we were playing with a kind of more conventional fullback, which I don't think Fuchs is that great at, and we had Chevalier and Blonde, of course, occupying the two centre mid roles. This year with us playing a more advanced right kind of wing back, this is kind of the perfect role for him as far as I'm concerned. He's really well suited to it and he's doing well there so far. Of course, Chevalier going to be playing that centre defensive mid role. Ahead of him, we are going to go with Blonde, who is continuing to perform well the day and of course scored that screamer in the league. Hopefully you can have a few more of them. Centre attack in mid, we are going to go with Thiago Almada. Out on the left, we are going to go with Rainy Adelaide ahead of Trincao. I talked about this guy's league form. He's fought his way into my first team plans. I feel like I have to play him in this kind of game. And up top, we are going to go with Kubik. And alongside him, Dukas, a player who I've not talked about much today, but three goals in five league games, two assists as well has had a good little start to the season so anyway let's get into this game at home against Chelsea a big game for us they are the first seed if I'm not mistaken in our group it's not going to be easy their team looks pretty pretty scary I'm not going to lie Benucci, De Vrij, Nangolan, Alexi Sanchez they've brought in actually surprising how many players they've perhaps changed in this team but yeah 
this is not going to be easy. Our team, on the other hand, not quite made up of quite so many superstars. But, well, we'll see how we get on going into today's game. Ignore the critics. Just play our own game. Let's try and boss possession here against one of, well, you'd have to say one of the big teams of European football in recent years. And, well, we'll hope to do one over on them here. Chevalier immediately letting Maratta know that he's about with that sliding tackle. A big game for us this, perhaps the biggest team that we've met in Europe so far. Of course, last year we got knocked out to Porto in the Europa League in our first European campaign. A bit of an unknown, uncharted territory to wander into here. I'm hoping for a good performance, but it's not going to be easy. Of course, this system hasn't really been tested against a massive team just yet. But, well, this might be a good time to see how it works. As Kubik finds some space, finds himself in the box and hits the woodwork. And, well, Mario gets it clear, but what an opening to this game. We find ourselves breaking through there. And you could see kind of the complete forward in Kubik drifting from wide into the narrow area, not picked up by a defender. Takasa's ball was good to him. The touch initially was great by Kubik, but he just couldn't find the right side of the post. Anyway, looking at the stats early on in this game, you can see 56% of possession in our favour. We are starting this game pretty solid. Chelsea yet to have a shot on target, but they do have a corner here, which we need to deal with. A Morata free header, Lafont. holds on to it. That was a clear-cut chance in favour of Chelsea. I feel like Morata is going to... Feel like he probably should have scored that. Free header at the near post. We need to mark him a little bit better there. And, well, hope to deal with more set pieces, which I feel like is an inevitability here. As Nangolan is running wide. Whips into Maratu. Shoots. And, well, having missed the, the clear-cut chance from the header, within a matter of seconds, he's got his head straight and found the back of the net, Maratu. You can see here, Chevalier deals with the ball well. This is one thing we have got to be a little bit wary of, is Diara kind of wandering out of position. Oh, sorry, not Diara. Fuchs wandering out of position as right wing back. Playing that more advanced area. Teams haven't exploited it too much yet. But it is one of those things that I have got to monitor with this system. And it might just be a weakness that we have to accept. But, um, yeah, just uh, Nangolan superb ball switched over. And unfortunately for us, we couldn't find uh, Morata in the box to clear the ball away. Anyway, we are on the attack here. Almada, let's get our heads on here, boys. We've been okay in the opening of this game. You know, at home against Chelsea, it was never going to be easy. Trying to play our positive brand of football. We've had more possession. We've created one or two chances. And, well, maybe we can create something here. Kubik to Dukas, who slots it away. Lovely move. Kubik, you can see there what he does as the complete forward. Just playing off the shoulder of Dukas. He's willing to drop wide, move into those channels. And you saw it there. He finds some space. Blonde, lovely ball to Fuchs, playing that right wing back role. Really able to find some space out on this right-hand side. Baits up the wing-back. Kubik moves into that space. And we knock the ball around nicely. And Dukas tucks it away. He's not going to miss that kind of opportunity with the goal begging at his uh, at his mercy. And 1-1 at half-time. I feel like it's pretty fair, to be honest. I feel like we've perhaps had a little bit more of the play in terms of possession. But if you told me it was going to be 1-1 at half-time, I would have definitely have taken it. So I'm not going to complain one little bit. I'm going to tell the players I'm very happy with how things are looking. We have got options on the bench. You can see Rennie Adelaide has not had the best game today. I could bring in Trincao for the second half. Almada has also been a little bit quiet. And Bula could be an option there as well. Kliedson and Dimitri Millet. We certainly have a plethora uh, of talent on the bench to really call upon if we need to. So... Yeah, we'll see how this second half starts to play out. But for now, at least, I'm going to stick with the team that we've got. Hope that they can find their feet as uh, well, we're going to hopefully continue to play this positive brand of football. You know, it would be very easy at home here against Chelsea in our first Champions League game to go more defensive. But that's not the way I want to approach things. I want to be positive, And, well, we need to defend set pieces like this. Ball to the edge of the area. Willian could take a shot. Ducasse, lovely tackle. Whipped in. Benucci, Alexis Sanchez. And the shot deflects wide. Uh, a real opportunity there for Chelsea. We got a few men behind the ball, thankfully. And, uh, well, can we have some marking here? Where is the marking? No one marking the man at the near post. I should probably change that in the in the settings. I feel like the guy uh, playing the... Have we not got the markers set up correctly? I mean, I almost want to check set pieces now. I'll be honest, I'm not a massive fan of the set piece creator. I know for some people, they absolutely love it, don't they? It's just not really for me. Where Where is the set-piece creator? Do I have to go through... I'm trying to think how you do it. <laughs> Which sounds terrible. I swear, I swear... Oh, it's... How do you change the routines when you're in-game? This is embarrassing. Oh, it's, it literally has its own tab. I've never had to do it in game. In fact, I think I did it not that long ago, which is kind of embarrassing. Right. <laughs> Let's sort this mess out now, shall we? Uh, I'm going to tell our centre back here to mark uh, the near post zonally. 
Because apparently we're not marking the near post at the moment and Morata just has free headers constantly. Right, I need to remember, to, I've only updated that for one wing, haven't I? I'm a genius. So you have to go to set pieces and then to the corner tab, right. And then on this side, we want you to mark the near post zonally. Right, hopefully that's going to do the trick now. Um, as I confirm those changes. That is really finicky to do, especially in-game. At least Guerrero's injured now. Right, 16 minutes gone. I feel like it's time to make some tactical changes. I've embarrassed myself enough by not being able to find the set-piece defending stuff when you're in a game. Let's try and fix stuff up here. I'm going to bring in Trincao. I think we're also going to bring in Kliedson to play that advanced playmaker role. You can see he's fairly well suited to this role. Get some fresh legs on. Trincao is very rapid. Kliedson is certainly not slow. Hopefully we can cause them some trouble here. But 1-1, one, one, we've been going toe-to-toe -to -toe with them so far. Kante on a booking and carrying an injury. Maybe a player we could look to pressurise here. As uh, well, Nangolan going to get the ball out wide to Maratu, who is the lone forward. To so see him in this wide area isn't too worrying. Although, now he's found his way through, it suddenly becomes worrying. The red lights of warning and uh, well, imminent danger are flashing in my eyes. And we need to get rid of this ball here. Kliedson. Gets the ball up to Kubik. Ducasse could be through here. He's on his own. Not really anyone ahead, but Kante fouls him. He's going to get sent off here. And I feel like now we have to go on the attack. Kante sent off. Time to go more attacking. Let's look to retain the ball a little less. We are going for this game now. I feel like we have to. I'm going to change Cleodson to be a advanced playmaker on attack. And, uh, well, they are going to have to sacrifice a little bit in their team here. I mean, if we now concede from a set piece, it would be... A little annoying, but we do deal with it now, and we're going to try and hit them on the break. Kliedson to Kubik. We have men surging forward in drones here. To Cass, out wide to Trincao, on off the bench. Could he get the shot away? He can't, but it falls to Chill while he webs it in. To Cass hits the woodwork, and we've hit the post for a second time in this game. We've created opportunity after opportunity. And we couldn't find the back of the net. I mean, we need to make the most of this extra man, but you feel like going on the attack is very dangerous against a team with the quality here of Chelsea. But it is what we are going to try to do. It looks like they might have ditched their right attacking mid. Uh, if I look at the formation. They've ditched their right attacking mid. I should probably tell our left wing back to just push up way more now. But, well, for a second at least, we'll focus on what's going on on the pitch. Sanchez here. Nangolan hits the woodwork. The keeper didn't even react before the shot happened. That's how hard he hit it. Chilwell, get on wing back on attack, my friend. Chevalier can probably also switch to a more supportive duty to try and get something here. But, well, the highlight isn't over. The tactical change is not going to come into effect just yet. Nangolan hits it. Lafont, lovely save. Tips it round the post. And well, we have got to be careful here that in our, I guess, in our little quest to try and get the winner, we don't leave ourselves exposed. But at the same time, I want to play positive. This is a, an opportunity, I feel like, with them and man down for us to make something happen. Not long left in this game. I'm going to make one last change. It's going to be bringing on Dimitri Mille at complete forward. But, well, four minutes left here. The set piece is whipped in. You can see we put a man on the near post and he's just stood there and done nothing. I mean, <laughs> at, least, at least he did what I told him to, I guess. But... Chelsea scored the set piece. And having seen a number of near post corners come in, we put a man on the near post who doesn't even attempt to attack the ball. And, uh, well, in the end, Gagliardini gets the goal. And it feels like Chelsea have robbed us a little here. I mean, it's been a very tight game. They created more clear-cut chances. But when they went a man down, that was our chance. And there's something oddly ironic and slightly hilarious about the fact we've conceded from a corner, having just changed our marking of corners for the near post. But unfortunately for us, Sanchez did pick up man of the match. It's a disappointing defeat. It's our second defeat um, in two live comms this season. We need to turn it around. In terms of when we'll be back, I think we might do the game against Marseille. They're a good little team. They've struggled as of late, but they are a team who well, pushed us to the edge last year, finishing fourth. Um, they are going to be one of our big rivals, you'd think, going for um, well, a top four finish again this year. And that game is going to be our first real test against a big French club uh, in the league. It is going to be at home, so hopefully we can do something there. A little bit disappointing, though, today's result against Chelsea. At the same time, part of me, would, it feels like at the start of the day, I probably would have taken a 2-1 defeat, as odd as that might sound. First time using this system against a bigger club on a European stage. I don't think it particularly floundered, and I feel like we can persevere with it 
for more, longer. I mean, it's working in the league. If it can push teams like Chelsea this far, um, it, it can't be a complete write-off as a tactic. And I feel like the game against Marseille will be another good opportunity to test it out. But anyway, guys, that is going to wrap up everything from me today. Hopefully you did enjoy today's episode. If you did, please do leave a like on the video. And other than that, it is me, Jack, and I will talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.